JBOD. Hadoop supports a concept called JBOD, which stands for just bunch of disks. Okay, it stands for just a bunch of disks. Yes. Bunch of disks. Okay, so now okay. if we dig deep into the definition, so we have a bunch of disks are like this. Okay, so some disk one, disk two, disk three, and disk four, disk five. Then what admin will do, right? He admin will configure these disks as a node. So a node may contain a one disk or a multiple disks. Okay, so here uh, okay. we are having the three nodes, and uh, in this node one we have the two disks. In the node two we have one disk. Right now, so we have configured the three nodes. Now these are the bunch of the disks. Now how many disks are there? Rakesh, five disks five. are there, right? Yep. So what five they will, yeah, mm -hmm. correct. Now what they will do? So in each disk, right? So we have to configure okay. the Hadoop, correct? So to configure some application, okay. first we should configure the OS. Op operating system is mandatory, right? Without OS, we won't do anything. So first, what they will do? First, what admin will do? Here you see admin, all right? So first, configure mm -hmm. OS into this machine. So generally, we prefer Linux uh, for the Hadoop. Okay, so we can also work in have Windows, but we always prefer Linux to work the Hadoop. So they took a one disk like this. Now in this disk, first they configured the OS. That's a Linux file system. So when the Linux configured here, we'll get a file system. File system, right? That is native to the Linux, or you can say, so okay. in this disk, we have the Linux file system is available. Okay, so what okay. did now, in the same disk, uh, we are going to install the Hadoop. So the admin will configure the Hadoop in the same disk. When Hadoop is installed, Hadoop will give you another file system in the same disk. Okay, so which file system it will give? It gives a file system with the name STFS. Ha, huh, Rakesh. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Rakesh. Sorry, it's a like a power electricity interruption. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Make sure. Right. Okay. So now we got this Linux. So they install the Linux now in the same machine. Uh, when we install the Hadoop, okay, so Hadoop will give you a different file system with the name SDFS, right? So we call this file system as a Hadoop distributed file system. So that is HDFS. So in each okay. disk, we'll have um, two so file systems available. Okay, so so question here, right? Um, whatever you're you're like uh, drawing and you're explaining, right? That will be recorded or not? Yeah, it's the, I'm recording the session. Oh, you you are recording the video. So what is the cluster? Ah, this again. Okay, we call it as a okay. flag. Now, okay. 
right so when you install Hadoop we'll get a one configuration file that is hdf7 site.xml okay so in this configuration file uh, we have a property dfs dot block is one property we're having by default this value will be set to 128 mp for the nearest one okay uh, it can be uh, 64 mb or it can be 128 mb or it can be 256 mb or it can be 512 mb right the block size so now to make the mathematics simple i am taking the block size is 64 mb okay, okay. now mm. and apart from this we'll have a one prop right so let it be right the, this is the block size now the file which i'm going to write is the 1000 mb size and the block size which i'm using in the sdf is 64 mb so how many blocks will create 15.16 that is total 16 blocks are created okay. okay that is now the input data which we are supposed to process is divided as a 16 blocks okay 16 blocks okay right now uh, as per the yesterday discussion uh, in Hadoop we are using commodity hardware like low-end machines low priced machines so at some point of time your node goes down suppose what we hear I wrote some data here okay some blocks right I wrote here so if this data node goes down so I'm going to lose the data right so to make the cluster high availability uh, to make uh, the data available even though one data node goes down, one node goes down we are replicating the blocks okay so in the same configuration file we have a property that is DFS dot replication okay which is set to 3 default now every block which we are going to write to the Hadoop cluster is replicated so as of now how many blocks are available block 1 block 2 right 16 blocks are available correct mm -hmm. now block yeah. 1 is replicated three times okay now block 2 replicated three times like this block 16 to replicated three times each and every block replicated three times and now these okay. replicated blocks are distributed to this bunch of disks okay so it is replicated mm -hmm. such a way so it will follow a policy and the block it will it follows block replication placement policy okay mm -hmm. so as per this policy each block is replicated such a way that uh, suppose the block one will be written into this one the same block one will be written here second node yeah yes and the third, yeah uh, yes in the third node correct like this third be, node, yes. right mm -hmm. so block one here okay so now if this data node goes down suppose if this disk goes down we can retrieve the black one from here right if both goes down we can retrieve the black from the third disk okay so like this all the 16 blocks are uh, written to the uh, all the available nodes right now yeah but we have we have only three nodes here in example that's why you write three or yes. the default always three yeah. no no it will be many number of nodes sometimes a client may have thousand nodes yeah is running with a thousand node cluster yeah so we have we will replicate thousand times in that case no no we replicate only three times but it will be different times okay yeah a block is replicated three times it will be written to uh, some nodes right so three okay, blocks okay. are written to nodes, three yeah. nodes mm -hmm. right three mm -hmm. random nodes right so some three nodes okay, it will okay. write okay. okay so now we won't consider the individual disk now. So the SDFS means it's a together all the nodes together we call it as SDFS. Okay. So here uh, don't okay. get here every, everybody will get confused. So you can think that you can connect to this disk this node and you can retrieve black one. Not possible. We together all these nodes together we are calling as a one SDFS. Okay. One SDFS. Yes. Okay. Because it is the only one file. Black one is only part of the file. But the complete file available in all the 16 blocks which spread in all the data nodes. Right? All in some data nodes. So that is if here block 1 is available, then block 2 is available here, block 3 is available here. Now the file is a combination of all these three blocks. Correct? 
So yes. like this, mm -hmm. the blocks are replicated. So now uh, actual data is available in these blocks, right? So the data which we are supposed to process is divided as a small size of chunks, and this we calling is a blocks. These blocks are replicated. Replicated blocks are replicated to the nodes as per the replication placement policy, so that each block replicated three times into available nodes. And together, all the blocks together is a single file. Now we call these nodes as a data nodes. What we call we call these nodes as a data nodes. Data nodes. Why we are calling this as a data nodes? Because the actual data which I am going to process resides into these nodes, right? Yes. So the actual data. data. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. The actual data resides into the these nodes because this is the data which I supposed to process in a Hadoop cluster. So I am calling this as a data nodes. So now what we'll do, we write multiple files to write every day. We'll write multiple files to the data nodes. But at some point yeah. of time, we should know that in which file is available in which directory. Right. So what I did, so I copied a file, right? I'm trying to copy a file prod visit to Rakesh directory, right? In the directory Rakesh, I'm having a subdirectory prod. Now I want to copy this file to this location. Right. So now I should have some index, right, where prod visit is available, so that I can pick the file directly. Correct. Yeah. Right. Suppose you have a textbook, but you don't have an index. Right. We can able to locate the files, but it is very difficult. It's it's very difficult. Yeah. I have given a textbook of one lakh pages, and I'm trying to find a paragraph, not even a topic. I'm trying to find a paragraph. It's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It is possible. Right. But it's very difficult. Right. Correct. Yes. So the same way we are keep writing the files to this data nodes, but at some point of time I should identify where the files are there, which file is available in which directory, right? Because or which block is available in which door? No, 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 no. We don't need which blocks now, because you write okay. this prod info dot txt. So how this file is written? This file is converted into the blocks are the blocks are distributed here. So now you okay. you need some reference. So where which of these blocks represent a which file? Right. Okay, okay. So for that okay, yes. we are taking a one master node. Okay? okay. We are calling this master node as a name node. Right. And all these nodes name are node. connected to this master. Right. So I'm calling this as a okay. name node. So it's kind of an index. Index. Yeah, yes. Right. So what name node contains? So it contains index of the data in data nodes. Okay. Are in a simple words, it's it contains a three kind of structure of data in data nodes, like something it will contain uh, like this. So what is the here in a data node one? Okay, mm -hmm. right. So there is a directory mm -hmm. Rakesh. In this Rakesh directory, there is a file Prad, right? So directory Prad. In the directory Prad, mm -hmm. there is a file prod underscore info. This path is written into the name node. That's it. Now, the content of the prod info that text is available where? In the data nodes. And this file name is written into the name node. Okay. So that is what name node contains now. Name node contains the path or the yeah. index of the data in a data node or reference of the data in a data node and the size of the file. And who owner of the file? This file belongs to which user, right? He, this this user belongs to which group? And what are the privileges for that file? So this particular five to six things are written into the name node. Okay. So now what the name node contains? Name node contains index of the data in a data nodes. Or uh, you can say metadata, or uh, you can say reference of the data in a data path. node are written into the name node, and it will contain the the path of the data, then the who created the file. And uh, when it is created, and uh, which belongs to which size. group, and the privileges and the size, correct? This will be written into the name node, okay. right? And remember here, name node is a primary memory. Okay. Okay. So what is a primary memory in the sense? If this goes down, so this content is going to be erased. Correct? Oh, oh yes. 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 And remember, in a Hadoop cluster, okay, 
So this you should know. In a Hadoop cluster, name node is the only reason for the failure. So we always say that name node is the single point of failure in a Hadoop cluster. Right? If the cluster is down, means that the name node is down. And there is no other reason to down the cluster. The cluster is down. Right? Think that only the cluster is going to be down if you have the issues with the name node. Because if yeah, you yeah. name node is down, the content from the primary memory is going to be erased. Then if mm -hmm. the name node is there, we can't able to use the cluster because I cannot able to locate the files in the data node. Yes. Correct. So name node is the very crucial one. And name node is only one reason for the Hadoop cluster failure. Right? It's the single point of failure for the Hadoop cluster. Okay. okay. So then what mm -hmm. we did, so we took one more extra node. Okay, and we are we are yeah. calling it as a secondary name node. Okay, so we are calling it as a secondary name node. So what we are writing in the secondary name node now, the snapshot of image of the primary name node is we are writing in the secondary name node. Okay? okay, so whatever we are writing here in the name node, we are writing into the secondary name node. Okay, now mm -hmm. here we are having an issue when we are writing something in a secondary name node, right? So when we write whenever checkpoint occurs, okay? Mm -hmm. So we have some checkpoint interval is there sometime, okay? So whenever checkpoint occurs, so whatever we have in the name node will be written into secondary name node, okay? So you don't write uh, real time, you don't write frequently, you only write when the checkpoint occurs. Yeah, yes, no, you have to continue, uh, just just give me the time, so I'll, uh, you may, your answer will be get uh, cleared obviously, your question will be, okay? okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as of now, whenever the checkpoint occurs, every checkpoint will have some duration, so whenever the checkpoint occurs, so whatever we have in the name node will be uh, written into the secondary name node, right? Okay. So. Now what happens here, suppose my checkpoint is occurred at 10.30, okay? Then, so whatever the content is there in the name node will be taken back up to the second name node, okay? Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. next checkpoint time is 11.30. Now, we have the uh, backup data is available in second name node till 10.30. My name node goes down at 11 o'clock. Then, so do we have the backup of the data which you wrote between 10.30 to 11 o'clock? Yes. No. Uh, we, we mean we don't have a backup. Yes. Yes. I mean, right? we lost yes. the data. Yeah. So the yes. data which you write between 10:30 to 11 11 o'clock, we are going to lose the data, right? So yes. that means it is not giving 100 percentage high availability, right? And so there is some point of the data loss occurs. Okay. Clear this one. Okay. So, so, so it doesn't have 100% high availability, so that's what, there's a limitation of the data nodes? Yeah, yes, that comes, uh, I'll teach you. Okay, this is one issue here in the architecture. Now, the second one, so client, the user wants to run a program. So then, he's in his desktop client, okay, in his machine, he entered a query like this. Select count of star, he wrote a query from table name. Okay, so prod info. He entered a job. He and he wrote a query. Uh, then he pressed the enter. Whenever the he enters the query, uh, a program, so we call it as a job. Okay, uh, always the user programs are the jobs. When the user write a program and enters a query, so this job is taken by the job tracker. Okay, so generally, job tracker is a process which resets into the machine where name node is available. So in the same name node, we configure the job tracker. So these are all the processes, okay? So in a same machine name node, we'll have a job tracker, okay? When client enters a query, so the job tracker will take the request from the client, okay? okay. Now, after that, job tracker goes to the name node to locate the data into the data node. Okay. Then job tracker comes to that particular data node where the data is available. 
okay and okay. in every data node we have a one job tracker every data node in Hadoop cluster so will have the task trackers are available okay so now the job tracker will assign the job to the task tracker okay any confusion Rakesh no so job tracker available in every data nodes no every job okay. tracker available in every uh, not only one name node job tracker is available in a name node every name node task okay. trackers available okay. in data nodes data node. task tracker right you said yes task trackers okay. so okay. now the job from the client is taken by the job tracker and in the name node it will locate the files where it is available then the job tracker connects to that particular data node and it will locate okay. the blocks related to this file and it will assign the job to the task tracker okay. so then task tracker will execute the job now actually who is going okay. to execute the job now the task, task tracker, tracker will take the data from okay. the block one and it will ex it will run the job okay? okay so once the job is completed then the task tracker will give output back to the job tracker top okay? tracker mm -hmm. task tracker will give output back to the job tracker then job tracker submits output back to the client users okay. correct suppose if this goes down during the job processing if this goes down okay see actually what happens here job tracker will assign the job to the task tracker okay then the task tracker is executing the job and as long as task tracker is executing the job task tracker will send the hard to beat to the job tracker it says hey job tracker please wait i'm working every continuous interval of the time task tracker will send it will send the hard bits it says yeah please job tracker please wait i'm working right it will keep sending the hard bits suppose if it stops sending the hard bits or if the job tracker is unable to receive the hard bits from the task tracker then job tracker thinks that okay this data node is failure and the task tracker is not working then okay. job tracker goes to another data node where same blocks are available then job tracker will assign this job to the task tracker in this data node then this track, task tracker will execute the job so as long as task tracker is executing the job it will send the hard bits to the job tracker so once the task yeah. tracker is completed the job task tracker will give the output back to the job tracker then the job tracker submits the output back to the client okay okay so this is how the job is going to be processed then what is the issue here the job tracker is taking the request from the client assigning the job to the task tracker and it's waiting for the task trackers signals correct so yes. can we able to run the multiple jobs here no uh, right no no yeah. first job tracker has to complete one job then only it can able to take the second request from the client so what is another yes. issue here first one is no high availability second one is parallel processing is not taking place here Processing. Okay. Yeah. Right. So here, parallel processing is not taking place. Correct. Yep. So now we have a name node, and the job tracker resets into the machine where name node is available, and the task trackers are resets into the data nodes. And I'll give you one reason why Hadoop jobs are faster. See that case where the data is available in the same place we are running the job right so generally yeah. the processing should be done in a server correct yeah but here mm -hmm. what we are doing where the data is available in the same machine here your not data is not traveling over the network to run the job right where okay. the data yeah. is available in the same place i am running the job so this is the reason yeah. why hadoop jobs are faster okay yeah makes sense right there is no server there is no connection yeah correct so this is one reason why Hadoop jobs are faster. Okay, now so this is the all this is what we call Hadoop architecture with a map reduce. So when we say the map reduce, now see here, right? If we come, uh, I'm coming back to the word. So as per the definition now, we know that how the data is going to be distributed. 
this is clear for you, right? Right? Yep. So, right, where mm -hmm. this distributed data is available, now it will be replaced into a file system called bunch of this, where the bunch of this will contain SDFS. Right? Yep. So, it's a file system. Now, once the data is available in SDFS, what we are going to do, we are going to process the data. So, how we are passing the data here, we are passing the data with a map reduce. Okay? So, the map reduce in the sense, we have a job tracker and a task tracker is available to process the data. Okay? So, what are the issues here if you are using this 100% high availability is not taking place and parallel processing is not taking place if you run the job with a right, Hadoop place map reduce. Okay? Okay. Right. This is the generally we are having uh, Hadoop before 2.0. Okay. Okay. Before 2.0. So these are the things generally we have the issues. Now, okay. what we are doing in Hadoop 2.0 onwards. Right. We call it as a SDFS place. We are using YARN. Okay. What it is? In, instead of map reduce, we are using yarn. Yeah, instead of the map reduce, not we'll have the map reduce and we'll have the yarn. Both are available. Now, if you want to have hundred percent availability, you can use yarn. Okay. Okay. Both are available here. Uh, that's yarn, preferably for to take the parallel passing. See, I'll teach you. Uh, I'll get hundred percent availability. So this architecture we we call it as SDFS plus yarn. Right, we'll have the both the things here. SDFS plus map is available here. Now it's it's your uh, requirement how you want to use, but we preferably use SDFS plus yeah. yarn here. So when it is come to the yarn, so what we are doing, so instead of the job tracker, okay, so whatever the job is done by the job tracker, we are assigning it to the two employees, two processes. One is resource manager, and other one is a application master. Okay, think that so does the same job previously is done by the one employee. So what I did, so I have distributed the job roles of that employee to the two people, two employees. Now what happens? The job job runs faster, and one will take job and another will execute, right? So I'll I'll, I'll give you the description of this one. So now here instead of the job tracker, we are using a resource manager. The yarn is my yarn in the sense. We are using a resource manager and application master. Okay, so this is replaces the yeah. job tracker. Then instead of the task tracker, we we use node manager. Okay, what we use? Okay. We say node manager. Node manager. Right. Mm -hmm. Now we come to the diagram. So. Now here, what we are doing from Hadoop 2.0 onwards, instead of the job tracker, I am using resource manager. Then what resource manager will do? Now the job which is taken by the client, right? Uh, it will it will be taken by the resource manager. First, what resource manager will do? Resource manager will take the request from the client. Use client. Mm -hmm. Okay. And resource manager locates where data is available in a name node. Then resource manager comes to that particular data node. Right in this data node, we have the node managers available. Then resource manager will create the resources to run the job. Okay, so it will create mm -hmm. some system resources to run the job. We call it as a containers. Right, it will create some memory containers and Resource okay. manager assigns this job to the application master. Then resource manager says, yeah, Mr. Application Master, so this is the job, and I have assigned the resources here. Please monitor the job. That's it. Now, application master is monitoring the job. So during that time, resource manager will go and take the second request from the client. And resource manager will create the memory containers for the second job, and it, says, it suggests uh, application master to monitor the second job. Now, what application master is doing? Application master is monitoring with the job so that I can take mm -hmm. a second, third request from the client. Right? So, resource manager will always take the request from the client and application master will always process the job. 
now we can run yeah, but then what is the node manager what is the use of node manager then who is executing the job here application master is monitoring oh. the job but not running the job not executing okay. the job okay. node manager will execute the job the task tracker whatever the but, task tracker is doing that is that is done by the node manager but then what is this uh, the green small box you said some memory right memory container that's uh, creating the resources for each job resource manager will create some memory boxes so uh, and it will assign some resources for that so in that uh, resource manager uh, the job executes and node manager uh, will execute the job application master will monitor okay. the job okay. okay okay so Got these it. are like memory containers mm -hmm. okay okay right so now we got the parallel processing yeah mm -hmm. parallel processing is taking place container. now right yes now parallel process taking place yes yes now because resource manager is because two here previously one employee in a simple terminology yes. right now we are the two mm -hmm. people are working same job role that is now one is doing and one is taking the request like this we it's so a one is executing and the resource manager can again take a request from the client correct exactly correct right now to get the high availability to get the high availability uh, we are creating one more extra name node okay we are taking another name node and we are calling this name node as a ha node what we are calling ha node high availability node okay we are calling it as a ha node now what i am doing here it's a two writes two writes in the sense whatever you are writing into the name node whatever you are writing here the same i write here at the same time yeah same time two writes okay two writes takes place so if this now whatever the data have available here the same we are also writing into the ha node and so the, basically it's a backup you're creating a backup yes uh, it's not exactly we can use the word backup here it's a two writes yes why i am saying two. that not a backup your admin will enable a concept called auto fencing right so there is a separate uh, uh, in is configuring is, uh, is available HA configuration we call it as what he will do he will enable auto fencing so it will have some set of steps involved here to enable this HA node so the admin will enable the high availability and along with the auto fencing when the auto fencing is introduced if one goes down automatically second one will up and run okay, okay. so, so admin has to uh, admin uh, has to do this one. the auto fencing yes he has to enable auto fencing Enabled. right so we have a concept called auto fencing right we'll have ha node to two writes so when you have the two writes if one goes down then we have the data into second name node right so the okay. data is available to get the complete mm -hmm. high availability so if one goes down obviously second will up and run so that yeah. no there is no downtime even zero percentage downtime here right yeah so 100 percent yes yes it's a giving 100 percentage high availability so now hadoop yeah. 2.0 onwards what we are using now hmm. we are using see now so when we talk about the hadoop domains okay our hadoop processes Right, it always in the sense before 2.0 mm -hmm. and 2.0 onwards. Okay, now before 2.0, right? If we call it as is, we have only SDFS is available. So what are the SDFS domains? Name node. SDFS means file system. That's then the data nodes and secondary name node. So these are for the SDFS. And the map reduce diamonds, it is a job tracker and it is a task, task tracker. tracker. Now, Hadoop 2.0 onwards, right? So, what, what are the SDFS we are having now? SDFS diamonds. Now, we can configure we the like name a... node and HA node, high availability node, and secondary name node is optional here. Rakesh, it's not mandatory yeah. and there is not much priority given here for the secondary name node, right? So this is uh, name node, HA node, secondary name node and data nodes. So these are, we call it as a SDFS, okay? And as well, MapReduce is available and YARN2 available. 
when it is yarn that is a resource manager and node manager Okay. Right, resource manager. And the application both, master. Both, yeah, both resource manager and application master together as a resource manager because it is only one job role, but we are dividing it to resource manager and application master. Okay. Okay, that's we call it as a yarn. Sure. So, if someone says Hadoop cluster is running successfully, that means in a cluster both SDFS and MapReduce ready should run, or SDFS okay. plus yarn should run. Suppose in a cluster only SDFS is running. You have not started the map reduce. You have not started the yarn. Can we able to run the job? Rakesh? Oh, yes. No. Yes. No. Sorry. In, in which one? Sorry, which one? Sorry, I didn't get the. Yeah, in a, in a Hadoop cluster, I have started the SDFS. Oh. And I have not okay. started the map reduce and yarn. Can I able to run the no, job? Then you can't. No, you can't. We can't because the job is always taken by the either a job tracker or a resource manager that means resource you have to, manager, to, yeah. to, to, to work with a job tracker you have to start the map reduce in the cluster or if you want to work the resource manager you have to start the yarn in the cluster yarn. right cluster. because these are all the mm -hmm. processes right you have to start those processes yes. right to cluster up and run yes mm -hmm. okay so now right so this is Hadoop before 2.0 and Hadoop 2.0 onwards onwards Right. So now, all this. So is this, the, this is the standard, right? May we use and yarn is the standard. Yes. Right it's now we are using yarn. Okay. And apart okay, from yeah, that, yarn, we have a Spark now, right? So now you can use SDFS plus MapReduce. I right here. So apart from this, uh, MapReduce and uh, yarn. So we have other execution environments are there. So I'll store the data in SDFS. And I'll run the jobs on a Spark. Okay, uh, SDFS. I'll store the data, and I'll execute under the Tej environment. Tej as an execution environment. Spark is an execution environment. MapReduce is an execution environment. So people will confuse here when we are talking about the MapReduce. Always people think that MapReduce is the programming part. Okay, MapReduce is okay. not a program here. Here MapReduce is a execution engine. Okay, let me write down execution engine. Yes, MapReduce and execution engine. And what is a MapReduce programming? That is a different. Uh, when actually when I first wrote, uh, it's a first right. Uh, I wrote a one program. So I have uh, okay. an argument with my colleague. He told me, uh, Ajay, can you write a MapReduce program? Then what I did, I wrote a C program. Then he asked, No, this is not a MapReduce. Then I wrote a C plus plus program. He's not satisfied. Then I told him, yeah, my dear friend, can you write an OOPS program? Then he's again writing in a C++, again or he's writing in a Java. That is, OOPS is a concept which is best supported in a C++ and Java. Okay, so here, MapRed is a programming concept which is best supported in a Java and Python C++. So it's a programming okay. concept, right? So the same thing, you can write the MapRed in Hive, you can write a MapRed in a Pig, you can write a MapRed in C++ Java. So that is a MapReduce programming way different. Here the MapReduce execution engine is a different. Okay. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, don't get it with the MapReduce. Right now we don't have the MapReduce. MapReduce is depreciated. Okay. MapReduce depreciated okay. means MapReduce programming part is depreciated, but MapReduce execution engine is available. Okay. Okay. So everybody but will have a lot there, of there, there is some limitation, here. right? Yeah, but MapReduce, MapReduce exclusion engine, or this MapReduce, like MapReduce to uh, uh, this program, that's yes. some something like uh, still uh, it's uh, some limitation, right? Yes. No hundred percent availability. Okay. Yeah, correct. Availability yeah, available. MapReduce having always because job tracker is having the limited, right? It's only one thing. Okay. So that's yeah. the parallel passing because in Hadoop 2.0 onwards, right? I can able to use. The job tracker here. I can able to use the map reduce. Yes. But what we don't have here, uh, if you don't know the high availability node, right? HA node, we are not giving high under high availability. So we can maybe we don't have the parallel passing, but we'll have high availability in Hadoop 2.0 if you use uh, Hadoop with a map reduce. Okay. Okay. Hadoop with the map reduces. Uh, limitations are there. Uh, package. 
So when we are using the MapReduce execution engine, always we have to write the data. See now how the data is processing, number of blocks distributed. So most of the time will be spent on reading and writing the data. So there are, this is one limitation with the main issue with the job MapReduce. So that's okay. now from Hadoop right now from January 2016 onwards. So the concept uh -huh. MapReduce is removed, depreciated. So right now we, nobody is much priority to write the MapReduce programs in Java. Okay. Okay. So this all clear now. You said you said the the, the, the concept of the MapReduce is is depreciated, and so you mean to say that there is no MapReduce exclusion engine anymore? Yeah, so execution so engine is there. Engine is it's still there. still there. Okay. Execution engine is there. Right. So always taken by the if you are using if you start the map reduce, we have a job program and task tracker will run the job. But writing the map reduce programming where we represent the data with a map reduce, right? So a mapper class, a reducer class, a driver, a combiner, the way how we write a map reduce program. So that we are not using. Okay. 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 So, so again, sorry, I'm yeah. going to ask you. So, in whole, this general is called cluster, right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, correct. So now, right. So what we did here, we took, uh, where is this? This one. Now, we took uh, a bunch of nodes like this, and we took a mass node like this. Now, what is a cluster here? Always, cluster is a logical thing, OK, to represent a group of nodes. Okay, so the cluster is, is always it's a logical one. Okay. Right. So now when this we connect, a logical term from group of for group of nodes. Yes, correct. Exactly. Got it. Right. So now this is together we are calling it as a cluster. But so what a cluster always contains some nodes, where a node contains some disks. Right. So I'm cluster contains some nodes. Nodes contain some disk. Yes. And the disk and disk they contain the block of those files. Yes, that the files is correct. SDFS. SDFS. Yes. Okay. So uh, I'll okay that I will give you the difference. Now here, suppose if you are using Hadoop from the cloud era. Okay. Right. So in the okay. cloud era Hadoop. We have uh, SDFS is available to store the data. Okay, uh, then SDFS where we are going to write the data, and uh, we work with the hue for the graphical user interface. GUI is available here. Okay. Okay. Rakesh, hue is a GUI. We can work like a uh, Windows graphical user interface for the Hadoop. That is Hue. Okay. Okay. In the Cloudera will have the Cloudera manager to for the administrators. Okay. So Cloudera manager is a tool to administer the Hadoop cluster, and Hue uh, is a uh, GUI to work with the developers as a GUI interface, and SDF is the file system where we are storing the data. Now, if you work with Hortonworks Hadoop. Okay, so they also uses the SDFS file system. Okay, so Hardenworks 2, we are having the same file system SDFS, and instead of the hue here, we have Ambari is available. Okay, for the developer, it's Ambari, and uh, for the administration, we have a Ambari admin wise available. Okay, okay? so. This is a file system. Uh, before actually in the Hartenworks, the recent version is 2.4. Okay, so in the 2.4 of Hartenworks platform, HDP 2.4 and 2.3 onwards, onwards, we are having Ambari. So in the previous version, that is before, in 2012, 13, 2014, in a Hartenworks mm. cluster. Uh, that is we have SDP 2.2 and earlier okay and earlier versions we have hue is available 
Okay. Okay. Actually, Hue is a component of the cloud era. Okay. And Hortonworks is a opposite business of the cloud era. They are the cloud two competitors. Okay. But if I am using your component, it doesn't make sense. Correct? Yes. Yes. So mm -hmm. then, from 2.3 onwards, they replace Hue with Ambari. So what is Hue and Ambari? Sorry, I just want to understand yeah. again. Hue is it's a GUI, right? Generally, previously before 2.0, we used to work everything in a terminal. Either you write a high program, you write a big program, or you want to work okay. with the base. Everything we are used to try with a terminal. Still, I use a terminal because I'm much comfortable in a terminal. But so there are okay. people, so they feel a little bit difficult to work with the terminal, right? So for them, so we have a Hue is available, right? Okay. Which will give you the graphical user interface. So if you want to work with the Hive, then you can see Hive editor is available. So Hive and Hue and is everything is the same. I mean, I have Hue access actually. Sorry. So they have Hue means you know there's a graphical graphical all the tables are available there. Yes, everything. Either you can write a Hive. Uh, the advantage here. See here. Generally, what I'll do, I'll write Hive program here. In my case, right? So because I'm much comfortable in the syntaxes, I'm much comfortable in uh, the errors. I know that. Right, so the best I'm good in the work in the terminal, but some people may get some confusion here, right? So you are not comfortable in terminal, then you can use here. So if you write show, it will show you the syntax with the colors. So what to type here? It will show you the help, show tables to list the tables, right? So this is uh, which is available in a view, which will give you the graphical user interface of the hive. Everything you can use hive here. You can work with a pig. Uh, you can we can use HBase, Scoop, right? So we can create. So uh, all all are the different programs, right? Yes, these are the Hadoop stack. Yeah, that I'll teach you. Okay, how to ingest okay. the data, what comes here. Yesterday we discussed, right? We are using, uh, we are collecting the data with the Scoop, and we are storing the data in HBase, correct? HBase, we are yeah. passing through Hive and Peak, yes. right? We are performing the indexing through the search. And the administering is done by the Sentry. Okay, yeah. is, uh, its uh, work is scheduled by the Uzi. And to locate the data, we are using data browsers, right? Like this, it's available. Okay, yes. We work, right? Okay. And some point of time, we'll see this you editor. Okay. So as of now, it's yeah, sure. it's a GA is available. Okay. Okay. So. What is the full form of GUI? Graphical user interface. Okay, graphical interface. Right now, yes. right where I wrote this one, here, right. So this is a hot and works. Now, if you are working yes. with a mapper cluster, okay. See, Rakesh, here you have to stop a minute. Mapper doesn't have a SDFS file system. Oh, okay. Okay, because they don't have a name node. Okay. Okay. Right, so there is no name node in a map part. And HDFS means the, the no HDFS. Uh, they are not using no HDFS. So what they are, they are using their own file system, which is map or file system. Okay, so the file system is different. That is map part, and the GI is available with Hue. Okay, the admin will be done with the MCS map or control system. That is MCS. Okay. Right, so it's admin tool. Admin tool. Okay. So, so sorry. Uh, in HDFS, what is the HD stand for? It's high. Hadoop distributed file distributed system. Hadoop file system. And in in the map R, it's only M. Okay, map RFS. Okay. Map R so file they system. HDFS. They never really done the HDFS. Why? Because. Okay. If you see this diagram, uh, we are not giving hundred percent high availability because name node is the only reason for the single point of failure. Okay, so when we achieved higher availability from Hadoop 2.0 onwards, correct? So yes, that yes. is from February 2015. This Hadoop 2.0 is available. So before that, we do, we are not nobody will give the 100% high availability. But Mapper, okay, Mapper from the day one they are giving 100% high availability. Even the Hadoop before 2.0 or Hadoop after 2.0. What they did, okay. whatever they are writing to the name node, they wrote here we are writing in a primary memory of the name node, right? So they took yeah. secondary storage to write the name nodes data. Okay. 
okay so here instead of the name node they took one disk and they are writing the data into the disk so if this go to, goes down what happens because it's secondary storage you can read up the data from the disk right so that is the reason yeah. Yeah. So they don't have the name node because they are writing this metadata into a disk Okay. okay, so I'll share one document today uh, in WhatsApp, right? Why MAPA doesn't have a name? They wrote a big article on their documentation, right? Why they are not yeah, using but MAPA, MAPA is not part of Hadoop then anymore, right? No, no, so it's, it's, it's one vendor. MAPA is another vendor of the Hadoop. Oh, okay. Right, so here, okay. these are the vendors, right? So we use Hadoop from the Cloud Era. It's Hadoop from the Hortonworks, Hadoop from the MAPA. See now, this is how we have a Hadoop in a Hadoop, Hadoop cloud era. Okay. Right? Most probably tomorrow I'll configure yeah. Hadoop in your system. Yeah, sure. I think I have access to Hue, not like a window, somewhere I have to log in online. Okay. And I have access for the Hue. Okay. I'm not 100% sure I have a, from cloud era or I have from works. I think yeah. I have to see. Yeah, I you think take, it's works. Yeah, you take a terminal and you can use Hadoop space version. Then it will give you the Hadoop version. Where which one you are using, you can see that. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to show you tomorrow how to connect to Hadoop cluster. Okay. Sure. Okay. So okay, Rakesh. So this for today. Yeah, sure. Right. So okay. this remember this uh, Napa doesn't have a name node. Name node. Okay. Because you should know this. They have a secondary storage. Uh, this right from the primary one. Right? Yes. So that's the reason MAPA from the day one. Actually, cloud and network, they don't have high availability since before 2015. Only MAPA is giving high availability. Right now, everybody... So we have high availability only after the Hadoop 2.0, 2 right? Correct. Onwards. Yes. Hadoop 2.0 onwards. Correct. Yes, exactly. So now, uh, a simple question, Venkit. Uh, Rakesh, so how many name nodes we can have in a Hadoop cluster? Uh, we can have uh, two. One is the uh, uh, high availability name node. Rakesh, and name node. Hold on. Before that, you have to ask another question to me. Which version you are talking about? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Which version you are talking about? Yes. Yes. If it is a before 2.0, we will have only one name node. Yes. And Hadoop 2.0 onwards, now you can configure any multiple high availability nodes. If you want to write three writes, okay. four writes, five writes, it's up to you now. Okay? So okay. this is a version specific here. Okay, got it. Right. So uh, secondary name node we doesn't consider as a name node, right? Primary. You are asking me only primary name node. Yes, correct. Right now there is not much priority will be given to the secondary name node. Okay, because we already have high name nodes already, right? High, right. high two, nodes. Yeah, two rights are there. Two rights are there. Three rights are there too, right? You said that you can create three, four, five times. Correct. And, and, see, and you can enable the auto fencing. Yes, and apart from this, you know, if you dig deep and deep here, Rakesh, mm -hmm. uh, you're writing this data into name node, correct? So name node is writing this data into primary memory. Okay? Yeah. So we never keep writing the data into the primary memory because it's sometimes it's full, right? Because it's a limited memory. We don't have the terabytes of the primary memory. Correct? Okay. Right. Yes. So now we have to write only new data into the name node the, and previous data should be flushed out, which you are not using. So basically they kind of purging the old data into the high availability node and only the primary data or fresh data will be in the name node. Yeah, so new here data. what we'll do, so that before uh, flushing the data, we write into the secondary name node. Okay, okay? and whatever the new data we are writing, we're writing into the name node and HA node, two writes. Okay. Yeah, but then uh, you won't have the full picture of all the indexing, right? You you won't have the full picture of all the, the all the files, all the index. Yeah, that because that all that, the one you are removing to the. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's simple here. Where it is? I'm sorry if I'm asking you something yeah, stupid. No, it's, it's, all I'm thinking I is think that that thing. you are. Uh, uh, no, uh, Rakesh, uh, let me clear this one. Right. Suppose. This will take one uh, primary name node here, okay? So we'll have a primary name node. Just think logical here, right? And we took one HA node, all right? Now both are the, both I'm taking as a name node, correct? In this case, both memory is limited. So I cannot write continuous data into both the machines. 
Okay. Right. So what I'll do here, I'll take the secondary name node. Now, whenever the snapshot, uh, right, checkpoint occurs, so the data from the name node I'll update into the secondary name node. Then. I, I flush the content in the name node. So now name node is empty, mm -hmm. H node is empty. And we have the backup is available here. Now whatever the new writes I'm writing, I'll write into both the nodes. The new writes. I'll write here, two writes I'll perform here. Now, so during, before next checkpoint interval occurs, whatever the data you're writing, it will be written here, it will be written here. So if it is goes down, we have available here. And the previous no, data is, is available true. here. Previous data is available data, here. So so, so that's what I'm saying like in order to see the whole picture you need a previous data as well as the new data correct uh, okay. and why we have the second importance of the second name node is we can't write all the data into the name node because the memory of the name node is limited at some point of time yes. you should flush out you have to remove that one because it's a volatile primary memory the RAM but what if, yeah but what if client wants to run some query on the old data then no because uh, it's whole data is available here no data nodes but where do you have the whole data here the data is always available into the name node sorry available in the data nodes only the reference is how much the it goes you're only this you're writing the path you're writing into the name node okay okay yeah, yeah. so um, what I'm saying like uh, let's say if the user really want to run some of the query on the old data or, or I mean yeah it's in the name it's in the data nodes. The, the, uh, the data itself is in the data nodes, but their path will be somewhere. Uh, the old path would be already here uh, archived into the secondary node. Yes, secondary Correct. name node. Correct. So, so that, 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 that that job will run into secondary run, run, name node, right? Yeah. In that case, because both are all these are connected together as a cluster. So what it will okay. now? If you are working the high first, high will create its temporary memory where all the data will be available here. Right. Okay. So now it doesn't uh, uh, think anything. It doesn't happen because no, no, I know. Yeah, in the logical, yeah, they will be combined in some memory. Okay. Yes, correct. Okay. It, it will be there. If we dig okay. a little bit more, uh, it's very simple. Right now, the name node writes its data into a file called FS image file. Okay. Mm -hmm. So whatever yeah. this, this is writing, so we can able to see this file now in Hadoop to Python onwards. We can able to see the name node data. FS image file is there. I'll I'll simply take a backup into my hard disk right now. So it doesn't make any sense right now. So it is going to be a big issue before Hadoop 2.0. From Hadoop 2.0 onwards, I can able to access this file. Name nodes metadata I can able to access. I can able to take the backup of that oh. file. I can able to convert it to readable format. So right okay. it, it is there now. Yeah. Okay, so I'm saying okay. I'm saving okay. this diagram too. And, uh, okay, and uh, just one more thing, right? I think yeah, I you already told me, but let me know how to access this uh, the the presentation and the uh, voice, I mean, record or anything, right? Everything. No, the record sessions uh, I have to upload into the YouTube, and I'll send you the link. Okay. Okay, and regarding oh, these oh, okay. notes, okay. you have given already have the access to this document, right? Yeah, but I mean, you know, step by step, the way you are uh, drawing the diagram, you know, and uh, it's there. See, now I'm coming here. Okay. okay. But you're gonna you're gonna upload on the YouTube, right? This whole session, and I can just listen to it, right? Yes. Okay. Good. Both the things here. One is a recorded session will be available on YouTube, and this notes and diagrams available in a document, which is uh, which is in a Google. Yeah, I mean, once you upload in, uh, any, everything on YouTube, I can just you know watch that again and again and kind of you know clear my thing, right? Yes. Yes, if I need it. Yes. Okay. okay. I'll 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 do one thing. I'll save like session one, session two with the video names, and this is session one. Okay. You can easily can it, it, It's a it's a video video uh, video clip, right? I mean the way you're explaining me on on the screen right now. Is that way, right? Yes. 